In this video, I'm going to go through some settings and traction to help you get started. So let's take a look at the Settings tab. The Settings tab is organized into a number of pages, starting with the Audio Devices page. For each page, you see a little description down here in the lower left, and it covers things like MIDI devices and plugins. Now, plugins are audio effects and virtual instruments, and if you want to scan your system for these so they're available, just click here on scanning and sorting and then scan for audio units if you're on Mac or VST and VST3 if you're on Mac or PC. This will scan the common locations. I'll cover that in a later video, but if you want to get started on that, you can scan these at any point and we'll add whatever is available to your system to this list. Now let's take a look at the general behavior page. At the top, it says username. You can fill in your username. Well, that's simple enough. I've done that. Now let's take a look at language. By default, it comes up as the English language. You'll also find English alternative. Now I maintain this English alternative translation in order to clarify the pop-up message and some of the other on-screen messages to better match the video. So if you'd like, you can load that. It'll look a little bit more like what you're seeing in the videos. The difference is pretty subtle, but if I load that, it will actually download it and then it'll make that change. So I'm gonna leave that running right now. Here's a few other settings I'll quickly go through. When starting traction, go to the project page. This is how I leave this set up. When saving edits, when an edit is about to be closed, always ask whether to save it. I prefer that because sometimes I want to abandon those edits. I also leave auto save edits every five minutes, but there's a lot of other choices here. If you don't like auto saving, you can disable that, but I leave it at five minutes. You can set the location of your temporary folder. You can also set the number of undo levels. I bumped that up a little bit to 50, but I think it defaults to somewhere around 30. Now this is an important one, audio clip import. When you import an audio clip, I like to have it always copy it to the project folder. So you can ask if it should be copied or only copy if you're on a network. Unless you've got a very small hard drive, the safest thing to do is to leave this always copy the file. Auto detect tempo, we'll get into that later. I just leave that at the default. For track resizing, you have a number of options and I've tried all these different options right now. I leave double click a track toggles between small and large height. And what that actually does, if we go to our hello world example here, if you double click on the header for a clip, you can see it jumps to a big size. If you double click again, it jumps to a smaller size. Well, that particular setting, you can toggle between three different heights. So you can toggle between small, medium, and large heights. If you set it that way, it does this, medium, large, or you can have it toggle between the small and medium size. But I like this one where it just goes between the small and the large heights. Now, starting with this orange entry, renaming clips, we'll get into these later on. One thing that I would point out is this next one, rename mode, only rename a source file if it's in the project folder. I think that's a good option to have set as well. With that, we can leave the general page and move on to the keyboard shortcuts page. So this page shows all the keyboard shortcuts in Traction. For one thing, you can learn a lot about Traction by just looking through all of these mappings. But before you do that, I would suggest changing it to one that I've set up just for this training. In the reset to defaults, there's alternative traction key mappings. If you select that and then do overwrite, it changes them somewhat. And the main thing that it does is it makes them perfectly consistent between Mac and PC versions. The normal defaults vary quite a bit between Mac and PC. This allows me a consistent way to explain these shortcuts. I've also tailored them to what I think is a very straightforward way to use keyboard shortcuts. If you're already used to traction, you can give them a try. If you don't like it, you can set them right back here. You can also save and reload your own key mapping if you wanna try this new alternative mapping. Another very useful tool related to keyboard shortcuts is view as HTML. So if you click view as HTML, then it pops up into a browser with a document showing all of the current mappings. And this is based on however you have it set up. So you can print this, use it as a guide, or study this to figure out how the keyboard shortcuts are all laid out. When I'm working with Traction, I print this out. Now check the Traction website because we've created a template for the function keys as well as a cheat sheet for these keyboard shortcuts related to the alternative Traction key mappings. That's also a very nice guide as you're getting started. 
Now, the settings tab also includes the loop database. This is not a feature that I use, so I won't be really getting into it very much. And control surfaces, in case you're hooking up external control surfaces. Now, within any edit, if you open any edit, you'll find additional options in the menus down in the lower left corner. And one thing I want to point out has to do with the mouse wheel. So if we open that, you'll see that mouse wheel actions, it says use mouse wheel for zooming and hold down shift to scroll. I don't actually like to use it that way. I use the mouse wheel for scrolling and hold down shift to zoom. So let me just show you what that means. If I scroll, that means that I go kind of up and down. So if I zoom in like this, now if I use my mouse wheel, I can scroll up and down through the project like this. So that's kind of how I like to use the mouse wheel. Then if I hold down shift, then you can see I can use the mouse wheel for zooming. But I also find that that's kind of touchy as well. The keyboard shortcut N will zoom to the extent of the project. So that's what I just did. It's the same thing as hitting this F over here. So I prefer to set it up where it does this scrolling with the mouse wheel rather than zooming. Otherwise you bump it and you start zooming in and out. The other thing about that is there's some additional behaviors on that. Enable vertical scrolling over the clip area. I would leave that on enable vertical scrolling over MIDI clips. I'll turn that off initially. If I'm working in a lot of MIDI editing, I might turn that back on. So when you're getting started, I would recommend in the wheel options is to set it up like this. Now this also works if you have a touchpad that uses gestures, two finger gestures for scrolling like this, where you can scroll back and forth and up and down works just like the mouse wheel. So those settings are a good baseline for learning Traction 5. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.